हेलो डियर ऑल स्टूडेंट्स अभी आई अभिन ने की वेलकम यू ऑल इन दिस संडे का फंडा गाइज फ्रॉम दिल्ली टू देहरादून द डिस्टेंस राइट नाउ इज कवर्ड एज अराउंड फाइव टू सिक्स आवर्स बट दिल्ली देहरादून एक्सप्रेस वे इज बिल्डिंग एंड वंस दैट एक्सप्रेस वे विल बी कम्प्लीटेड गाइज देन यू कैन कवर दिस डिस्टेंस इन अराउंड थ्री आवर्स ओके सो वट इज दिस प्रोजेक्ट अबाउट हाउ दिस प्रोजेक्ट इज गोइंग ऑन वेर इट हैज रीज and what are some special civil engineering work that are being done or that will be done in this project that thing we will be discussing in this sunday ka phanda so like and share with all your friends guys and let us see the each and every activity that will be done in this project this delhi dehradun expressway is building in many phases and the last phase which is near dehradun is this one and guys here From Delhi to almost Roorkee or Chutmalpur, the terrain is plain. But when we move from Chutmalpur to Dehradun, guys, there is a hilly terrain. And guys, the Asia's largest, largest wildlife corridor is building here. As you can see behind me, guys, there is a long corridor building here. The length will be approximately 16 kilometers, and this will be above the ground level. And it is specially, specially designed. it is asia's longest wildlife corridor it is designed such that there will be a huge clear span uh, below this okay so that the wildlife from one part can go to the other part of the jungle without being disturbed by the transportation or these roads and buses and all okay so this all load will be at very high elevation from the ground level so that the wildlife is not disturbed which is below this okay now guys let us see some more things guys many tunnels are made here so that the transportation can be faster now guys uh, not talking about tunnel in this part see this retaining wall okay and the width of the retaining wall is increasing as we are going downwards the reason is very simple guys because the retaining wall is retaining the soil so what is the horizontal thrust that is a k into sigma vertical k can be k or kp or whatever mostly it is active case because if nothing is mentioned guys always the soil will be uh, moving the retaining wall away from it okay in general case so guys uh, as we go downwards uh, horizontal thrust will be more you have seen the earth pressure diagrams as well therefore as we go below the earth pressure is more therefore guys the thickness at the bottom is more and the thickness at top is less because the horizontal thrust will also be the less there now guys you are seeing the various v poles also okay of course guys this tunnel is made we want the strong soil otherwise there can be a failure or landslide now guys effective stress is sigma minus u sigma bar is sigma minus u as the in uh, rainy seasons water table will increase so pore water pressure will increase or sigma bar can decrease that can lose the shear strength of the soil okay shear strength can be reduced due to this these weak holes are made so that whenever there is some extra pore water pressure especially in the monsoon seasons these can weep these can cry water can come out from this and when water will be coming out of from this that means guys effective stress will increase and again the strength will be of the soil will be at its optimum value okay that is why these weep soil are made so that effective stress is not reduced and the shear strength will not reduce and this will be helping for this tunnel also to be in stable position so guys these are the very high spans okay as you can see behind me this is the asia's largest wildlife corridor and you can see we need the column such huge elevation to these slabs is provided so that the wildlife from the other part can come to this part and guys one more thing there are two types of actually you can say flyovers one when there is a one there is a clear gap between the two spans and one where the whole slab is on the soil okay so that is completely closed so there the wildlife cannot pass through so here intentionally they have made the clear spans so that the wildlife can pass through and there is no disturbance to them thank you guys hello dear students in this wildlife corridor uh, let me show you the pre stress wires okay in the gate slippers and books many times we have heard about the pre stressing see how the work has been done uh, because guys of course the heavy loads heavy traffic load will be here so normal reinforcement will not work here we have to go for the pre stressing now guys you can see the wires have come out from those okay and they will be stressed and then tightened up 
So above four, uh, one, two, three. Uh, above three or four wires are there, and at the bottom, guys, at the bottom row, you can see all are closed. So they are stressed, become pre-stressed, and then they are closed, as you can see at the bottom row, so that uh, the reinforcement will be pre-stressed and they can take the heavy loads. So students, you have seen the wildlife corridor. In fact, the Asia's longest wildlife corridor of 8 kilometers. Now, what are the technicalities in this? Let me tell you. Before that, let me tell you about the complete project. As of now, the distance between Delhi to Dehradun is around 270 kilometers and it takes roughly around 5 to 6 hours. But once this expressway will be built from Delhi to Dehradun, you can travel here almost in 2.5 hours. That means 50% of your time has been saved. Now guys, what is the difference between this expressway between Delhi to Dehradun with any other expressway of the country, whether it is Delhi to Agra, whether it is Bombay to Pune. The difference is in the various phases of this expressway from Delhi to Dehradun. The first phase is of 32 kilometers. Okay, from Akshadham to the Eastern Peripheral Expressway. Okay, the second phase is Greenfield, where the nearby area is mostly crops. That is from Eastern Peripheral Expressway to the Ganeshpur. And the last phase from Ganeshpur to Dehradun, in the last phase, in the last 8 kilometers, okay, from Delhi to Dehradun, in the last phase, in the last 8 kilometers, it is longest wildlife corridor of the Asia. Guys, there is Rajaji National Park. Okay, this can be asked in interview. There is, this is Rajaji National Park. Okay, and this length of this is 8 km. This is Asia's longest wildlife corridor. It is made such a way that after construction, when wildlife from this place wants to go to that place, they can travel easily and the traffic will not be coming in between. This is the speciality of this expressway. Okay. Now guys, uh, as you have earlier seen in the video, the heavy loads will be here. So pre-stressing is done, okay, uh, in various parts to reduce the time because the Delhi to Dehradun 5 hour distance, 5 hour journey you have to convert in almost 50%, 2.5 hours. So various tunnels have been made in this part, okay, and these pans are very long. Of obviously guys, I told you that there are two types of uh, flyovers you have seen commonly, one is where in between there is a clear gap okay and one is where there is no clear gap here is complete soil okay so both have its own different advantages like here uh, if some cross section has to be made then it can be made guys uh, a new road can be made from this of course if the spans are a little bigger but here there are nothing that can be done okay here the failure will be Ductile, not a sudden failure because soil is there. It will fail. Mostly it, it will not fit suddenly. But here might be a sudden failure may occur. Here sudden failure will not be there. So of course guys, as in our case, in Delhi to Dehradun, the wildlife, we allow the wildlife to pass through. So we have to go in that case. Okay. Now, one more thing is that apart from priestess guys, these long columns are used. Okay. And what is the critical load? Critical load is n square pi square e upon uh, L effective square n square pi square into e into i minimum okay n square by n square pi square yes pi square e into i minimum upon L effective square so these are the long columns okay in the clip you just shown the span was you are not able to see the long spans okay because that was the, just the beginning of the flyover once after traveling few kilometers there will be long spans okay so critical load has to be taken care of there what is n guys in our case now n is equal to 1 so you only study this formula pi square e i minimum l effective square but guys because in your case n is equal to 1 because you have studied only these cases where n is the number of buckling loops so n is 1 in your case but the supports can be like this also. So here n is the buckling loops. So for here n is equal to 1. But for here n is equal to 2 also. So this is the general formula. So guys uh, this is the main challenge here. That these long columns may have buckling failure. So this condition is also checked there. Okay I hope you enjoyed this video guys. 
and uh, what more videos you want in this section please let me know in the comment box share the video with all your friends like and subscribe the channel guys thank you take care